Rotax aircraft engines, they've been changing the way we think about powering aircraft for 50 years and are most well known for their groundbreaking 912 model, introduced in 1989. That 80 horsepower engine and its derivatives have sold more than 50,000 examples and have accumulated over 97 million flying hours. But what if I told you that Rotex designed and certified an engine with much, much more power? Like 300 horsepower? That engine was the awesome Rotex 936. The 1980s was a period of transformation in general aviation as the demand for more efficient and lightweight engines grew. Rotax, a subsidiary of the Austrian company BRP, had been rising to the challenge. The story goes that in the early 1970s, a number of aviation enthusiasts, all members of the local flying club and working at Bombardier Rotax, that's BRP Rotax today, wanted to develop aircraft engines. They'd noticed an increase in sales of Rotax spare snowmobile engines in North America, which they discovered were being adapted and used for aircraft applications. At that time, engines for recreational aircraft were usually modified automotive and industrial engines, which hadn't been specifically designed for the weight-conscious general aviation world. So Rotax began making engines specifically for aviation, starting in 1975 with their 642 engine. It was a good decision, as the next 15 years would see their engines fit in with a boom in ultralight and microlight aircraft. Production of the two-stroke fan-cooled 50-horsepower Rotex 503 engine would go on to hit 33,000 engines and would lead in 1989 to the creation of a true titan in the ultralight engine world, the 64-horsepower Rotex 582 UL. That engine would go on to stay in production until 2021. While the Rotex two-strokes were making their mark in the ultralight world, the Rotex engineers turned their sights on a higher horsepower four-stroke engine for sport aircraft and in 1985 began developing the Rotax 912 engine. A clean sheet project, Rotax took the opportunity to innovate and come up with something that was light, efficient and powerful. The first 912 produced 80 horsepower and weighed only 56 kilograms. And as the engine proved itself to be ever more reliable, it developed from 600 to 1500 hours and then 2000 hours. The project was a success. In fact, success is almost too weak a word to describe the path this engine set Rotax on as the 912 would be refined to become 100 horsepower and go on to become the biggest selling engine in the light sport aircraft world. But where do you go next? For Rotax and its owner Bombardier, who had purchased Rotax way back in 1970, the sights were set on a higher horsepower market. Now there's not too much information out there on the development of the Rotax 936 from Rotax themselves, aside from a single page of information on a section of their website dedicated to historical engines. Flyers' inquiries were met with a polite. The 936 was a development project that ultimately did not proceed to series production. In line with our policy, we do not disclose further details about past development projects as our focus is on current and future innovations. But we do know the engine was in development over a number of years. Evidence suggests that the program began around 1996. The new engine wasn't going to look anything like the 912, but was going to be a V6 configuration. It would be 2003 when the existence of the engine was finally revealed to the public at EAA Oshkosh in July of that year. By that time, the engine valve covers that had said Rotax now carried the name Bombardier, and there were two versions, the V220 and the V300T. Michael Barrell, President and Chief Operating Officer of Bombardier Recreational Products, had some bold words. Today, we begin a new era in the general aviation industry. Assumptions about what a piston aircraft engine can accomplish and what today's more demanding and environmentally conscious world expects from an engine will forever change. We listened to the demands of pilots and airframers and we developed the engine they asked for. This technology is years beyond what currently exists. The technical specifications looked impressive. 120 degree V6 configuration, 3,104 cc displacement, power output from 260 to 300 horsepower. The cooling system was liquid based, a three to one reduction gearbox, weight of around 570 pounds. With that wet installed weight of just 570 pounds, the V300T was designed to deliver an impressive power to weight ratio, making it ideal for aircraft that would have been powered by six cylinder Lycoming 540 and Continental 550 engines, which were both heavier units. Size wise, it would fit in the same space as a Continental IO360 engine. 
The V-Series engines were designed to be quieter than existing piston power plants, with lower propeller tip speeds thanks to that 3 to 1 reduction gearbox. FADEC, that's full authority digital engine control, provided single lever operation and allowed the use of unleaded fuel, while two independent engine control units operated sparks, ignition timing, dual injection and also the propeller. That ECU also controlled the turbo, so operators didn't have to worry about overboosting the engine. With a 4,550 RPM cruise, the promise was of a 16.5 gallon per hour fuel burn. After seven years of research and development, including 6,000 hours on test stands and 121 hours in a Piper Cherokee, reports were that the 300 horsepower V300T would pull the PA28 to 20,000 feet at a steady 1,000 feet per minute at 2,000 prop RPM. Bombardier Recreational Products planned to offer the V6 engines in complete power plant integrated assemblies, suggesting all the customer needed to do was to bolt the power plant to the firewall and plug it in. Unusually, these would be to certified aircraft manufacturers first, before rolling out to a small number of experimental kit manufacturers, rather than the other way round. After that, a number of STCs would be made available to the replacement upgrade market. And the suggestion was, by 2008, pretty much anyone who wanted one would be able to buy one. No prices were ever widely quoted, but industry assessments suggested a price tag would be competitive to existing engines of similar power. Like everything in aviation though, time was rolling on, but there was still no talk of deliveries. In 2005, US distributor Aircraft Engine Systems Incorporated had a stand at Oshkosh and reported that the V300T had accumulated 600 hours of flight testing across four different airframes. The promise was that the engine would become available once an unnamed major OEM aircraft manufacturer received their US certification for an airframe and V300T combination in 2006. When Oshkosh 2006 rolled around, Aircraft Engine Services talked confidently that sales of the engine would start in 2007, and even reported that the V300T would be certified to burn autom automotive fuel with 10% ethanol content. All this time, the Rotax 912, meanwhile, was continuing its runaway success, and rumours at the time hinted that there were divisions forming over resources being channeled into the 936 project, taking away from the plans to further develop the 912's capabilities. By November 2006, there was news, but it wasn't good news. BRP Rotax was shelving the 936 piston engine program, despite the fact the certification of the engine was due by the end of the year. Gerd Olmberger, BRP Rotax's Vice President and General, Air General Manager announced, We've come a long way with the V6 engine and we're proud of what we have accomplished. Industry insiders talked about concerns around insurance and product liability likely weighing into Rotax's decision, even though there was a lot of market interest in the engines. Innovation and experimentation ensures progress. The Rotax 936 may never have graced the sky beyond its prototype form, but it seems likely that lessons learned from the technology developed for the program went on to influence the other engines in the Rotax range. With the big engine project shelved, Rotax would refocus their attention on the four-cylinder 912, and in 2012, the company introduced the Rotax 912 IS engine, with fuel injection and a digital engine control unit to ensure optimal fuel and air mixture at any altitude for longer flight range, lower operating costs, and CO2 emissions reduction. That engine configuration continues its phenomenal success to this day, and has been developed into the 150 horsepower Rotex 915 IS, which arrived on the scene in 2017, and was followed by the 160 horsepower Rotex 916 in 2023. Rotax's position as an innovator in light aircraft propulsion remains firmly cemented in general aviation today, but that big six cylinder 300 horsepower engine remains a tantalizing chapter in their history and makes us wonder, 20 years later, as the need for solutions to transition away from fuels like 100LL become ever more critical, perhaps the Rotax 936, or something inspired by it, is still yet to have its day. If you enjoyed this video, then please help us out by hitting like and subscribe for more general aviation content from Flyer.